In this video, I'm going to explore 100 Bastions in the Nether. We all know that Bastions are one of the hardest challenges in Minecraft because of the Brutes. But the risk is worth it since these things are filled with so much gold, netherite, and of course, string. So this one isn't going to be easy. Also, this video took a super long time to make, so if you do happen to enjoy this and want to follow along with the rest of this hardcore Minecraft series, please subscribe. Only 11% of my viewers are actually subscribed, so you can join that group of people. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoy. Let's explore 100 Bastions. So before I start this adventure, I had to make myself a mob farm, which I did on my Twitch stream. This was so that I could get a load of rockets before setting off to make the adventure so much easier. And after a few hours of AFKing, I had a full shulker box of rockets. So I was ready to take on the nether and start hunting down the bastions. So I headed to my first bastion and started killing my first bruise. The loot in this place was nothing above average, but I continued to work my way through. I'm actually super intrigued to see how many brutes and piglins I will have killed by the end of this journey. I did some research about bastions before this adventure and found out that chiseled blackstone is an indicator for gold blocks. So every single time I see this block, I need to mine for gold since it's most likely there. And it was. Phew, first Bastion down. Bastion 2 seemed to be the same layout, but it was a little bit different, so I had to search for the loot again. The more Bastions I loot, the easier it will be to find this loot, and obviously the more Brutes I'm going to run into. And before you guys get worried thinking I'm going to show every single Bastion, no. I'm just going to show the best bits from each, and probably miss out a few, because 100 Bastions, you guys are going to be bored out of your mind. Oh no. Oh no, oh no, 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 oh, thank god. Yep, that was my first close call of many, and also this would be my first pigstead disc of many. Bastion 3 was boring, and Bastion 4 was pretty much the same, but I did get a bunch of gold blocks, so I guess it's fine. Then Bastion 6, I found the treasure room. This, in my opinion, is the best kind of Bastion, filled with so much loot, but also so many brutes. I navigated my way down to the bottom and found the jackpot, but these brutes did not give up their treasure without a fight. Oh no, not again, not again, not again, not again, no, 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 oh, come on, come on, please, eat it, eat it. Oh. Yep, well, these, these are dangerous places. I would not recommend anybody to come in here unless you are very prepared. These, I usually lose a totem every single time I enter one of these. But the loot is totally worth it. I don't really want to talk about my parkour skills here because, well, yeah, I'm just not going to talk about this one. Bastion 11 was another treasure room, and wow, this thing had enchanted golden apples, netherite, and another enchanted golden apple. This one was the richest out of them all up to now. Bastion 12, I got a lot of gold. Same with Bastion 13. I think you're starting to understand the premise here. At Bastion 22, I was in another treasure room and displayed my amazing parkour skills again. But luckily, I was able to survive and continue my adventure. At Bastion 25, I realized I had used two totems at my last two Bastions, so I didn't want to use another one. At 
At Bastion 29, I realized I had now four shulker boxes filled with loot. But I quickly realized it was the little things like string and magma creams, which I didn't really need. So from now on, I will only be grabbing the valuable stuff. Okay, so now in total, I had used four Totems of Undying, and these things were not getting easier at all. They pushed me right to my limits at one point, and I nearly fell in lava. And unluckily, Bastion 37 to 60's video file was corrupted, but of course I still had all of the loot, so that wasn't an issue. But yeah, unfortunately, I have none of the footage from 37 to 60. I do apologize about that, but hopefully I can compensate with the last 39 of them. At Bastion 73, I accidentally hit a pigman because of sweeping edge on my sword, which did not end well. And then as I was grabbing gold at Bastion 74, I came up with the idea that I want to build a really, really cool Bastion themed build back at my area when I return to remember this super cool adventure. And for that, I am going to need a load of blackstone. So I pretty much tore apart Bastion 74 and stole it all just so that when I return, I can build the coolest thing yet. And at Bastion 89, I came into my first real fight on this whole adventure with a ghast but he did not last very long. By the time I'd gotten to Bastion 91, it seems that the Piglin Brutes had learned how to jump hit. So from now on, I'm gonna have to start building up three blocks when killing these things. It seems towards the end of my adventure, all of the Bastions started to become the treasure room ones. I had barely gotten any for the first maybe 45, but at the end, they all started to show up. Bastion 95 was one of the coolest Bastions I had ever seen in my life. It had merged with a basalt delta, so there was literally a lava pool delta in the middle of the Bastion. It was so cool. Oh my god, two... And as you can tell from my reaction, I was surprised to see two netherite ingots in this place. The gold was also encased within the basalt. This was so cool. And I made another huge mistake at Bastion 96. I'll let this one explain itself. And after having one of the most tense moments in my entire Minecraft career, it was time to grab the gold that I came here for. At Bastion 99, I had a super close call with death again, but I had no idea until I turned around. Once again in the lava at the bottom of a treasure room, brutes just kept falling on my head. But luckily, I was able to fend them off and get out alive. 
And then, I won't lie, Bastion 100 was the cleanest swoop I had had on a single treasure room on this entire journey. I was in and out and barely took any damage from anybody. And then, I had officially done it. I had explored and survived 100 Bastions in Hardcore Minecraft. So, it was time to head home with everything I had gathered. So it took me a while to fly back to my portal, but eventually I made it, and I was through. I was back into the overworld, in one piece, alive, with a hell of a lot of loot. So it was time to start organizing it all. And once I had organized everything, I sectioned off the three main things. Gold, iron, and netherite. So from 100 bastions, I had stolen 9,578 gold ingots, which averages out at around 96 gold ingots per bastion. The iron seemed to be a little bit more rare, however I was still able to leave with 1,606 ingots of iron, which again averages out at around 16 ingots per bastion, which I'd say is a pretty good average. And then finally, the one we've all been waiting for, from 100 bastions I was able to salvage 34 netherite ingots, which of course only averages out at around 0.34 ingots per bastion, so 1 in 3 bastions gave me a netherite ingot, but considering all of this loot was completely free, I cannot complain whatsoever. And of course we cannot forget about the endless amounts of diamond armor, tools, arrows, pig step discs, and so much more I got from this travel. And now I am back. This is not a voiceover anymore. This is me in the flesh. I have not recorded like this in a long time, but since we are onto the series, it is time to do so. So I'm picking up this beacon because at Bastion 74, I mentioned that I was ripping that place down so I could build my own Bastion Remnant kind of replica in the overworld. Also, I forgot to mention, I made this creeper farm here over on my Twitch. If you want to go follow my Twitch, my Twitch will be linked in the description. I have been streaming this world a little bit, but I made this mob farm right here so that I could get a load of gunpowder for that mission since obviously I had to go through a lot of rockets to find all of those bastions. But yeah, it is now time to make myself the bastion inspired build, which is going to have a huge golden beacon in the middle of it. And since this beacon is right here and covers quite a lot of this area over here, I'm going to build the bastion one over here somewhere. I think maybe on this hill just behind. I, mm, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I of course have a lot of blocks here, so I have quite a lot of room to play with. I think I could do it right here on this little area. So I'm going to chop down some trees and I guess what I'm going to do is I'm just going to build this thing and I'll cut back to you guys when it's done. All right, so I'm not going to lie. I had a little bit of a brain fart. I don't know what to build. I, I'm just struggling big time. So I built this. I don't really know what it is. I'm probably going to add like some walls down here or something just to add a little bit more to it, but it's nothing special. It does the job. It kind of looks cool. I do like it, but it, it could definitely be better. So maybe later on in this world or on another video or on stream, maybe I can give this a bit of an upgrade. But for now, it'll definitely do. It's big enough for what I need it for. I can definitely get all of the gold down inside. And I'm not going to lie yet. These walls have definitely added something to it. I think it looks a little bit better now. But yeah, now it is time. I've grabbed a load of my gold. This directly here is a nine by nine. So if in theory, if I get all of this down, it should be big enough only just to get my beacon to full power and allow me to get speed 2 or haste 2 or whatever I want all the way on this side of my land as well. And now this will be my second full beacon. So of course, I already have the full emerald one that I got in the last episode, but this now is my full gold one. So what am I going to do next? Probably iron and then maybe diamond and then netherite is like the final one because... Yeah, netherite's gonna be a tough one. Maybe diamond will be as well. I'm gonna have to do a lot of mining for that, but here we go. Hopefully, this will do the job. Beacon is on. A nice big beam shoots up into the sky, and then if I just turn some of this into normal gold, put it in, and what? I guess... Let's just do speed again. Speed 2. Done. Do I get speed 2? I do. Okay, so this is now officially my second fully powered beacon. Yeah, it's not the greatest build that I've ever built in my life, but you know what? It'll do. It does the job. The roof is very, very basic, but there we go. A full gold beacon. That is what you can officially get from 100 bastions in hardcore Minecraft. And that was it. 100 bastions had got me to this point. And it wasn't an easy task, but I made it out alive after many, many totems and so many close calls. So now I officially have two completed beacons. 
The next two are going to be iron and diamonds. So hopefully in the next video, I can get those done. Don't forget to subscribe so that you can keep up with every single part of this series and watch what this hardcore world turns into. But for now, I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.